well. Um, yeah, still didn't show up today. She was supposed to two days ago, but we're still waiting on it. Um, yeah, so we're gonna do a little in-house project, which involves our favorite machine, the Kitamira. Um, so I'm gonna try and show you what's going on, and then you're gonna laugh because it's kind of ridiculous. Um, the Y-axis gibs are clearly very loose um, because the table pivots back and like back and forth when you jog it in the y-axis. Now it's actually more prominent when the table's all the way to the left or all the way to the right. When it's centered up it seems to be okay. So we are going to take the covers off and check the gibs and see how loose they are. We're assuming that they're very loose. Now the machine's in 1994 so it's been in service for I can't do math. 25 years, maybe more, I don't know. And what I'm going to do actually to show you is I'm going to jog it in the X. And the easiest place to look is actually on this cover. Because it's actually rigidly attached to the saddle. So, Hopefully the camera can pick this up. I'm just rocking the hand in the back. So anyways, I don't know if you can see that, I'll check later. But it's really bad. It's it's embarrassingly bad. We're gonna try and tighten it up and see how good we can get it. Welcome to the belly of the beast. Um, I really don't want to take these covers off because I had them off like three months ago. And it was just really hard to get them off because they were glued on. And so when I put them back together, I thought I'm never going to take these off again. I glued them, I glued it back in place, place to seal up for all the cooling. Anyways, you can see my very nice uh, glue lines all the way around here. That stuff was expensive too. It was like $25 for a a tube and yeah that money's basically wasted now because there hasn't even been coolant in this machine since I did that. I just want to get all the chips off of everything up here because any of those chips fall they're gonna fall right under the ways and the ball screw and I don't want that so it's it's pretty well cleaned out now I'm gonna take these bolts out. Get some bolts over here and then uh, yeah should be good to get it out of there. Okay the back off. That was a lot of work. Have you ever seen the guts of a CNC machine? But there's the two ways and the ball screw right in the middle. The piece. The piece I'm looking for is the gib. It is in there. I don't know if you can see that. Somewhere about right there. Okay, so now we have the covers off. Mark's wiping up the ways to measure them. And this is our measurements here. So one thou small in the middle on the left and on the right. Uh, we're going to see what that is over there. Okay, so with the ways off, when you're looking at this thing, you can see how bad it is. Like, Okay, that's the gift they should be looking at. And you can see the whole thing around. Okay, so I set up an, an indicator on here. One, uh, so the mag base is on the saddle and, and it's just going to attach right to the way. And you can watch this thing. Go, go ahead and turn it. So that's nearly 25 thou. It's probably closer to 30. I just had another thought. I'm going to find a feeler gauge and see if I can fit a feeler gauge in there. But I don't actually know if we have one. Well, that 
is a 15 foul feeler gauge and it just slips right in. So that's That's quite impressive, but we're going to tighten that up and I think our goal is going to be like under 2,000 on the indicator, so we'll have to set that back up. But. Okay, got out my Kitamira Bible and uh, this is the gib. I'm trying to figure out how to tighten it because there's some form of bushing here. There's a lock washer. I don't know if that's to set it or if that's just a wiper. So let's look at number nine first. Number nine is a wiper. Uh, let's see. Number 11. Number 11. Says collar. I don't know if that's helpful. Um, so this is the gib, the piece we're going to tighten. There's actually one on the front and one on the back. There's a collar there. So I guess basically we're just going to try and tighten up number eight and see what happens. So I called Kid Amir to ask about these gibs because I don't exactly know how they work. In the meantime I took off the covers for the x-axis. It just blows my mind that there's so much junk in there. Like those covers are supposed to protect all of this and I've taken apart Haas machines before and they're the same way, just covered with crap. So I don't know if that's normal or... But, but still, it's like all these surfaces are super important. I'll show you the cover itself. There it is. First thing I did, of course, go like this and this whole thing fell apart. I'll one piece, and I'll clean all this out if I put all that together. But there's the other gib for the x-axis, right up there. Now I just gotta get after this cover. So we're gonna fire it up and move it over, I'll take this off. Alright, so the GoPro ran out of battery yesterday, and we ended up not uh, filming a whole lot. Um, so, but we did a bunch, and I'll turn you around and kind of show you what has happened, and yeah. Okay, so we had to remove some covers over here in order to get the way cover off on this side, which meant we needed to get the table off. Um, so the table's over there, we kind of did a manual pallet change, which means we had to like touch some wires back in the electrical cabinet to get these hydraulics on them. Um, but we tightened up these gibs all the way. So there was a spacer in there on each side that was about 600 thousandths. And we got, we threw both of those, well I shouldn't say we threw them out, we took them out and sort of tightened up the gibs as far as they would go. And then we actually did need a 40 thou spacer. So we took out quite a lot. But this side of rocks now about a thou and a half. And then we moved on to the X axis, um, which is a little more difficult. These gibs are like super worn out and these definitely need to be replaced. We've worked with those ones, which they're okay, but I'm waiting on a quote to get all new gibs. Um, yeah, so that, so these ones we took the spacers out completely and we got this down to about four and a half thousandths, I believe. It's hard to push on it with the camera, but it's far better than it was. Um, and we kind of discovered the reason that the Gibbs are in such bad shape, or just everything is just in bad shape, is that actually there's basically no um, way oil lines that are still intact. There's there's pieces of broken. I mean, look at that. I mean, 20 years of you know, existence and oil pumping through these basically just disintegrated them. So there's pieces all over the place. Um, but yeah, we basically got to find all of these. You can see that down there. So a line should be there, a line should be there. There's some more down here. 
Um, yeah, they all sort of come from junction blocks like this. So I replaced this one quite some time ago. But there's actually uh, a block of about six right here. So we're gonna try and take out all of those lines and replace them. Uh, so I went around. I went around and tried to find some uh, tubes that we could use, and here's my, here's my stash of them. This one right here, I think, is the most promising. It's about 151, and these lines are 159. And thankfully, there's a diagram about where all of them should go in the book. So we're going to try that, and basically, we're going to put it back together, use it for a little while, and then uh, once we get new gibs, we'll. Well, hopefully, take it all back apart and put those in and get even better. So here's the diagram. Um, the only problem is, is that this machine is a pallet changer, which means the table configuration is completely different than this. But anyways, I started with this one, which goes to a bearing on the servo. Uh, and it goes from there all the way to a connection in the back. It did take me a second to find it, but um, essentially it goes from that down there through a hole on the mount. To the back of the machine, which is right here. So I pulled this old one out. Um, yeah, get rid of that. And I pulled my new one through is right here um, and this is actually the hose that comes to feed everything and it looks like it splits up into uh, three different sort of regions that it goes to and then this one on the bottom so I'm gonna get this plugged into there and then one's done it's been a while since I did this on that front one I don't exactly remember how it's done we got these little brass pieces here and this little cylinder it's supposed to go inside of the tube, then on the outside, and then the nut clamps it together. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be like a single-use system or if these are replaceable, but I am going to reuse them. I have to cut a huge taper on the tube and then pull this nut on there with like two pliers. So now I'm going to trim the tube again and put this in there. I just realized that I put this nut on here, and I think I need to put the cap on this tube first. I'm going to take this part and do it all over again. Okay, now that's the correct setup. Oh, I just has to plug in there. So be screwed down. Alright, so that's attached now. Um, now I just got to pull it through from the front. So I wired that through there. I fired the machine up and moved back all the way, but now you can see where the old hose is goes to here goes through there so all I gotta do is cut trim this and stick on that one there's one done only about like 12 or something to go okay so it's been a long morning I've replaced a whole bunch of the lines uh, actually all of them for the Y axis so everything left is going to be on the X um, the plumbing for the lubrication system on this machine is a little different because it has the pallet changer. It's different because there's all these hydraulics here on the table and whatnot. Anyways, I don't have the correct I mark. I don't have the correct schematics for how it's supposed to go, so it's kind of like a puzzle at the same time. But anyways. Uh, yeah, there's a junction block back here that has, I think, five ports. So basically, my goal was to find five places to put lines. Um, and there's two right here. You can see those. And then there's three at the other end. There's actually one for the... There's actually one on the top of the ball screw right here. And then there's one underneath the ball screw down there. And then the other one goes through that hole. I don't know if you can see it. It's a hole right there. It goes through that hole and then takes an immediate uh, right to go into the, to all the ways. So, I have not yet.
yet connected. I've not yet connected uh, uh, any of these, but uh, I have a marketing meeting to go to now. So I'm gonna wrap this up. Maybe clean up a little bit. You saw how filthy it was in there every time. Every time that I come back here, I take off my gloves and here's a bunch of here's a bunch of the old lines. What remains, anyways? All right, here we are, day three of our one-day project. Um, I've replaced these lines, so these are all new. Uh, that was the end of the day yesterday. I just have to hook them up to this junction block here. And also I spent some time cleaning off my little workstation because it was, it was nasty. Okay, so I've done a few more things. I'll show you. Uh, I got these. This cover's back on, but I got these lines all there. And I don't know if you can see. There is oil going through them now, so that's cool that you can see it. And then, uh, so that's all for the y-axis, and then this right here is all for the x-axis. And I can't replace any of the lines because this table would have to come off, and you'd have to be looking at the bottom side of the saddle to get to those oil lines. But I was able to get two of them. Uh, so let's see. Underneath that, there's one that goes to the top of the wave, and then there's also this line which goes to the top of the back one. You can actually see the oil right there. I'll actually fire the machine up and you'll be able to see the oil move just a little bit. So here it should go. So I guess it's just that little bit every time when the pump kicks on, which means the nut for the ball screw, which has like four or five feet to go, is going to have to, you're going to have to cycle the machine on and off several times to get it to do that or just let it idle and run, I guess. Um, I got the way covers back on the line, I'm going to start buttoning up the X here. Shouldn't take too long. Yeah, so I gotta clean these up before I put them back on, and that's the top side of one. Well, I don't think that's supposed to happen. But. And then look at the look at the inside of this one. Like this. This is going to have to get real clean. 